Good morning, everyone. This is a very important day for us. And as you know, I reference temporal markers that our founders and our poets and others have used over time uh, to place us in time, to emphasize the importance of time, because everything is about time, how we use it, how we make, how we uh, mark it. And today is an important day, because today is the day uh, that we name the managers, we go to the floor uh, to pass the resolution to transmit uh, the articles of impeachment to the Senate, and later in the day, when we have our engrossment, uh, that we march uh, those articles of impeachment to the United States Senate. As I've said, it's always been uh, our founders, when they started, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary, when. Abraham Lincoln, four score and seven years ago. Thomas Paine, now are the these are the times that try men's souls, the times have found us. Again and again, even, even our poets, uh, Longfellow, remember, listen, my children, and you will hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere on the 18th of April in 75. Hardly a man is now alive that remembers that famous day and year. It's always about marking history using time. On December 18th, the House of Representatives impeached the President of the United States, an impeachment that will last forever. On, since December 18th, there have been comments about when are we going to send the articles over? Well, we had hoped <clears throat> that the courtesy would be extended, that we would have seen what the process would be in the Senate. Short of that, uh, that time has revealed many things since then. Time has been our friend in all of this because it has yielded incriminating evidence, more truth uh, into the public domain. Since we passed the articles uh, on December 20th, two days later, New email showed that 91 minutes after Trump's phone call with uh, President Zelensky, a top office of management and budget uh, aid asked the Department of Defense to hold off on the Ukraine aid. On December 29th, revelations emerged about the OMB director and acting chief of staff Mulvaney's role in the delay of the effort by lawyers of the, in the administration to justify the delay and the alarm this is very important that the alarm, that the delay time uh, caused within the administration. On January 2nd, newly unredacted Pentagon emails, which the House subpoenaed and the President blocked, raised serious concerns by the Trump administration officials. By Trump administration officials, they were concerned about the legality of the President's hold on the aid to the Ukraine. On January 6th, former Trump National Security Advisor John Bolton said he would comply with a subpoena uh, to testify and that he has new relevant information. On January 13th, reports emerged the Russian government hacked the recurring gas company, Burisma, as part of their ongoing effort to influence U.S. elections to support in support of President Trump. And just yesterday, the House Committee, two of our chairmen here, uh, Chairman, Chairman Nadler of Judiciary, Chairman Schiff of Intelligence, uh, Chairman Elliot Engel of Foreign Affairs, and Chairwoman Maloney of Government Reform, uh, uh, they uh, released new evidence pursuant to a House subpoena. Uh, Lev Parnas, you know who that is, an associate of Ruli Giuliani, that further proves the president was an essential player in the scheme to pressure Ukraine for his own benefit in the 2020 election. This is about the Constitution of the United States, and it's important for the, the president to know, and Putin to know, the American voter, voters in America should decide who our president is, not Vladimir Putin, Putin in Russia. So today I'm very proud to present the managers we will bring the case, which we have great confidence in, in terms of impeaching the president and his removal. But this further evidence insists that, and we wouldn't be in this situation had we not waited, insist that there be, that there be witnesses and that we see documentation. 
And now you see some of that change happening on the Senate side. I hope it does for the good of our country and to honor our Constitution. So today, on the floor, we'll pass a resolution naming the managers, as I mentioned, appropriating the funds for the trial and transmitting the articles of impeachment of the President of the United States for trying to influence a foreign government for his own personal and political benefit. Chair Adam Schiff of California, our lead manager, Chairman Schiff, uh, uh, is, as you know, chair of the Permanent Select Committee <coughs> on Intelligence, is serving his 10th term in Congress. <coughs> Excuse me. Before Congress, Mr. Schiff was a California state senator and served as a federal prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office in Los Angeles for six years, most notably prosecuting the first federal FBI agent ever to be indicted for espionage. <laughs> Chairman Jerry Nadler, chair of the House Judiciary Committee, is serving his 15th term in Congress. Mr. Nadler served as the top Democrat on the Judiciary Subcommittee on Constitution, Civil Rights, and Civil Liberties for 13 years. Before Congress, Mr. Nadler served in the New York State Assembly for 16 years. Wow. Chair Zoe Lofgren, Chair Zoe Lofgren, Chair of the House Committee on House Administration, which has jurisdiction over federal elections, is a senior member of the House Judiciary Committee. Ms. Lofgren is serving her 13th term in Congress. This is Chairwoman Lofgren's third impeachment as a Judiciary Co Committee staffer in the Nixon impeachment, as a member of the Judiciary Committee on the Clinton impeachment, and now as a manager in this impeachment of President Trump. Chair Hakeem Jeffries of New York. Chairman Hakeem Jeffries is the chair of the House Democratic Caucus and is currently serving his fourth, fourth term in Congress. He's a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Uh, before being in Congress, he served in the Assembly of New York for six years, an accomplished litigator in private practice before running for elective office. Mr. Jeffrey, Jeffries Church for, clerked for the Honorable Howard Baer, Jr. of New York District Court for the Southern District of New York. Congresswoman Val Deming, Demings of Florida. Congresswoman Val Demings is a member of both the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and the House Judiciary Committee. Ms. Demings serving her second term in Congress. Before Congress, Ms. Demings served as the Orlando Police Department for 27 years, part of that time as the first woman police chief in Orlando. Congressman. Excuse me, Congressman Jason Crow of Colorado was a member of the House Armed Services Committee. Mr. Crow served his country, our country, bravely as an Army Ranger in Iraq and Afghanistan. Before coming, running for Congress, uh, Mr. Crow was a respected litigator in private practice in Colorado. Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia of Texas. Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia is a member of the House Judiciary Committee. Before Congress, Ms. Con Ms. Garcia was served in Texas State Senate previously. Uh, she was the director and presiding judge of the Houston Municipal System and was elected city controller. Ms. Garcia was later elected the first Hispanic and first woman to be elected in her own right to the Harris County Commissioner's Court. As you can see uh, from these uh, descriptions, uh, the emphasis is on litigators. The emphasis is on comfort level in the courtroom. The emphasis is making the strongest possible case to protect and defend our Constitution, to seek the truth for the American people. I'm very proud and honored that these seven members, distinguished members, have accepted this serious responsibility again, to protect and defend for the people defending our democracy. When we leave here, a little bit later at noon, we'll go to the floor and pass a resolution uh, naming the managers officially. But I wanted to say more about them here uh, and, and to say that the decision to come down in favor of litigators is necessitated uh, by the uh, clear evidence that we should have 
witnesses and we should have documentation and we have to make the strongest prosecution, not only of our very strong case, but of all the information that has come forth since. We're going to take a few questions. Speaker Pelosi, yes, sir. If time has only strengthened your case, why did you rush to have a vote before Christmas? And Mr. Chairman, why hold only public hearings for just two weeks? Well, couldn't you stretch this out longer in order to get this more information that you consider that only bolstered your case? Well, I'll yield to the distinguished chairman, but I will say that we had a strong case for impeachment of the president and removal for the president. Anything more would be in terms of where we go in the Senate, and I'll yield to the chairman. So we, we've always felt a certain uh, urgency about this uh, impeachment, given that the president was trying to get foreign help in cheating in the next election. But as soon as we did take up and pass the articles, Mitch McConnell made it clear that he didn't want a trial in the Senate, that he didn't want to hear from witnesses, that he didn't want documents. And this time has given us the ability to uh, show the American people the necessity of a fair trial, to expose the degree to which McConnell is working hand in hand with the subject of the impeachment, the president, to essentially turn what should be a trial into a sham. Uh, and that, that time has been, I think, very effective. Uh, in not only bringing new evidence to light, and the evidence was already overwhelming, but also forcing senators to go on record. Do they want a fair trial, one that's fair to the president, but also fair to the American people, uh, or are they going to participate in a cover-up? Uh, so I think it's been very effective, and, and as you've seen, additional evidence continues to come to light that not only has bolstered an already overwhelming case, but has also put additional pressure, I think, on the Senate to conduct a fair trial. Uh, and the last thing I'll, I'll say is uh, Ms. McConnell has taken to saying that the Senate should only consider the closed record that comes from the House. Uh, and as if what the Senate is is not a trial but an appeal from a trial. But of course, the Senate, the framers had in mind a real trial with witnesses and evidence. And if McConnell makes this the first trial in history without witnesses, it will be exposed for what it is, and that is an effort to cover up for the president. Uh, finally, uh, some have suggested as, as uh, part of your question, why didn't we wait uh, to get more testimony? Well, we have sought McGahn's testimony, Don McGahn, the president's lawyer, um, since April of last year. We still don't have a final court judgment, so yes, we could have waited years to get testimony, further testimony, from all the people the president has been obstructing. But essentially, that would completely negate the impeachment power. That is, allow the president, by virtue of obstruction, to prevent his own impeachment. And uh, that was an unacceptable course, particularly when the whole object of the president's scheme was to cheat in the election, which is the ordinary mechanism for dealing with a corrupt presidency. I was very discouraged to see uh, Mitch McConnell sign on to a resolution dismissing the case. That, to me, dismissal is cover-up. Dismissal is cover-up. Do you want to speak to that, Jerry? Let me, let, me, let me add to that. There is an overwhelming case, beyond any reasonable doubt, uh, that the president betrayed the country by using by withholding federal funds appropriated by Congress, breaking the law in doing so, in order to extort a foreign government into intervening in our election to embarrass or to try to embarrass a potential political opponent of his. There's overwhelming evidence of that. We couldn't wait because, I mean, some people said, well, you know, t let the election take care of it. He's trying to cheat in that election. So it is essential that we bring this impeachment to stop the president from trying to rig, not from trying, he tried, from rigging the next election, from conspiring with a foreign government as the Russian government attempted to, to, to rig our last election. The, over, the evidence is overwhelming. The, the latest evidence uh, with, the, with Parnas and Giuliani makes it even more so. It made sense to wait a while as the more evidence piled up but we have to proceed because the election, the integrity of the election is at stake. Let me add one other thing. This is a test of the Constitution. The president's conduct violates the Constitution in every single way, trying to rig an election, 
stonewalling the Congress and saying no one may testify because I can have a cover-up despite Congress. But it's a test of the Constitution now. The Senate is intended by the Constitution to conduct a fair trial. The American people know that in a trial you permit witnesses. You present the evidence. If the Senate doesn't permit the introduction of all relevant witnesses and of all documents that the House wants to introduce, because the House is the prosecutor here, then the Senate is, is engaging in an unconstitutional and disgusting cover-up. So the question is, does the Senate, the Senate is on trial as well as the President, does the Senate conduct a trial according to the Constitution to vindicate the Republic, or does the Senate participate in the president's crimes by covering them up. Thank you.